Hey everybody, welcome to PhotoBlue. Today I thought I'd show you how to create your own workflow using Nikon NX Studio. Now the first thing you want to consider when you're uh, creating a workflow is how you get your uh, photographs off of your camera and where you store them. So you may already have a method of doing this and that's fine. You can continue to use the same method. I, I like to uh, keep the uh, name of the camera or the camera that I'm using and then the date of the shoot. And that's just the particular way I like to organize them when I pull all the photos off of, a, of the camera. You can also organize it by location, uh, a shoot name, however you want to do it. Uh, I named the folders by the year, the month, and the day so that they sort nicely. You can actually create subfolders so you might have a folder for each year or a folder for each month and then separate shoots under each one of those or how, whatever works best for you in other words. Uh, now when I take the uh, photos off of my camera I just pull it right off the SD card onto the computer but you can also use this import function right here and that brings up this program here, Nikon Transfer, for, and you can actually transfer them off of an SD card, or you can transfer them directly off your Nikon camera using a cable. So that's another consideration. So that's the first thing that you'll want to decide. So the next thing is, is once we bring in the photos, and we're looking at the directory that we've just done a shoot, for example, we may want to use either star rating or color coding for our photos. Once again, it's whatever works best for you. In this case, I've used some star codings on a few of the uh, photographs here just to demonstrate. And so if I click this five up here, it shows me all of the ones that I rated as five. If I click this one, I, it shows me all the four star rated ones. So I'm going to bring up these. Uh, photos that are photos that I might be interested in doing something with and sharing on printing or uh, whatever purpose I have for them. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to uh, pick this photo right here and uh, bring it into the editor. So say this is the one I want to pull out in my workflow and I'm going to uh, save this so that I can edit it in another editor later. If you're saving it in another editor, you can do rough edits on it and then fine tune it later in your editor. If you're going to take this directly and share it on the internet, you'll want to fine tune things. So there are a couple of things that I would recommend looking at in here before exporting in them just because uh, it will save you time in the next part of the process and uh, it will get things a little closer for you. Uh, for when you do the final edits if you have to do edits in an additional program. So one thing would be the white balance and so I'm going to take this white balance tool and I'm going to use this gray from the path which is asphalt and I'm going to click on that. It warms it up a little bit. I can also adjust the sliders here for the tint and to make it warmer or cooler if I want to at this point if I want to fine tune it. I'm not going to worry about that too much because in this example we're going to take it to another photo editor or we're going to prepare it for another photo editor. So we can close that down. The other thing you may want to look at is the exposure values, uh, particularly if you have a um, really, really high contrast um, um, photograph that's in the sun or has a lot of shade in it or something. You may want to look up at the histogram. It looks like we have um, some clipping possibly up here at the top to the right side in the highlights, but the uh, shadows are okay. I don't see any uh, highlight in here that looks like it's going to be a particular problem to me. But what I could do is I could bring down the exposure uh, a little bit so that we have a little bit of a gap here and then I can bring it back up again later in the uh, uh, final uh, photo editor. I could also mess with the uh, highlights and the shadows uh, down here under the brightness and color control. I'm going to bring this back up a little bit and uh, 
I think I'm going to just underexpose it a little bit and leave a little bit of a gap there. I can brighten it up slightly later if I decide I want to. Uh, but that gives us a good range to work with in a photo editor. So that's another thing that you want to consider. You want to make kind of adjustments that you would do in RAW. Uh, and one of them is exposure and shadow and highlight details where you can bring back some of those details that you might lose otherwise. So you may not want to totally fine tune it, but you want to bring it down a little closer to what you want or something that you can work with in the final editor. Uh, so, so we've got all of those changes done. And let's say this is where we want the photo to be to go into our photo editor. The final stage of our workflow is to export this photo into a format that we can use when editing. So we're going to click up here on export and that gives us this window right here. Uh, you can set the uh, destination folder to whatever you want and that once again depends on whether you want to put it back in your main uh, uh, file and save it under where the, sh the rest of the shoot is. What I like to do is I like to bring it out so that I can find it quickly into a separate folder which is just for my exports. So I'm going to you can browse and put it in any one and you can change it anytime you export. I'm going to just use the default that I have specified earlier. I don't want it to be a JPEG in this case because I'm not going to use this as a final image. I'm going to edit it and then create a final image in a photo editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick TIFF 16 bit because that's the highest quality and I want the highest quality since I'm going to edit it in an editor. If we were going to use it just to use directly we might go to JPEG Right now, I, I have it on 100% because I could actually edit a JPEG in another editor as well. And then I would probably want the best quality and then bring it down to a lower quality uh, for sharing. Uh, if I were sharing it also, I could, I could change the dimensions of it right here. And I might bring it down to like 80 or 90% or to share it or even less depending on the size that I wanted it to be. So if we bring it down to 90, you can see it's it's halved, or it's more than half, it's, it's a third of the um, size that it would be if it were full size. We can also go here, as I said, and change the size uh, of the, the photograph and once we change the size of it, and this is more of a sharing size right down here because it's it's shorter. Uh, you can see it's it's reduced the size quite a bit as well. But we want it full size, full resolution, and we're going to bring that back up here. And then we're going to actually switch to TIFF 16 bits, which is a huge file, uh, but it will give us the most detail. Like I said, you could also edit it in JPEG at 100% if you wanted to as well. So I'm going to take this file and, and so that I can bring it into another editor. And all I have to do at this point is go export. Once I export it, I can go to my uh, folder where I have my exports. And here's the photograph right here. I can open it up in a Windows viewer. And there's the the image that I've exported right there. So this is now in the TIFF format and I can open it in a, another photo editor or this Windows viewer which views TIFFs and uh, I can edit it from here if I wish to. Uh, if I saved it as a JPEG that would be the format to save it in if I wanted to share it. This has been Photo Blue, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.